Ooh. Morning, it's early. Yes, it is quite early this morning. It's uh, well, 6.22 in the morning. We've got a departure time of seven o'clock. Um, because I want to get out early because I want to get the natural light whilst the sun's still quite low in the skies because today's flight we're actually doing a bit of a scenic flight all low level um, the flight's only 58 minutes long as well but out of here at Kununurra and over a rock formation uh, in the Kimberley Desert which is called the Bungle Bungles now there are scenic flights that you can do with some of the operators here at Kununurra but whilst you've got your own plane and whilst you're in the area why not do your own scenic flight? Kunanara traffic, Kilo Juliet November is entering, lining up and rolling runway 30, uh, crosswind departure to the south, climbing 3500. Kunanara traffic. Full power. Static up here is good. Temperatures and pressures are all good. Airspeed is increasing. 60 knots. 70 knots. Kind of traffic, Kilo Junior November departed time 45. We're tracking uh, to the south 180, passing 2000, climbing 3500, tracking to Bungle Bungles. Kind of traffic. All right, leveled off at 3500. And we've got a short leg until we get to the Bungle Bungles. But it is going to take us over the Ord River where we were yesterday doing our Ord River cruise, checking out Lake Hananara and then checking out the dam wall at Lake Argar, which we're going to go pretty close to as well. And we should actually be flying over Lake Argyle itself. Beautiful morning. It's nice flying this time of day as well. Before the winds kick up and before the turbulence kicks in, you can stay a bit lower to the ground and you don't have to wrestle with all of that turbulence like we normally do in the afternoons. But especially after seeing all those crocodiles yesterday on the cruise and knowing that they basically live just down there, if we did need to go down for whatever reason, I've got my survival kit, uh, got water, and I have a very small pen knife to wave at the crocodiles. That's pretty magnificent. Now, Lake Argyle itself, completely man-made, and it's formed because of the dam that we saw in yesterday's video, the dam at the end of, or at the start of the river that then runs to Kununurra, so the Ord River that was dammed. Over three years, basically filled up this whole basin here to create Lake Argyle, which never existed before. They told me some really interesting facts, actually, about the lake. So the amount of water that's in there at the moment is the equivalent of 20 times what is in Sydney Harbour. So that water there, that's like 20 Sydney Harbours just sitting out off our left wing at the moment. And also, if they open the dam up, I love this one, if they open the dam up and just let all the water out, if they let it out, that's 60 tonnes of water every second. It would still take five years before this emptied out completely. Incredible bit of engineering. And of course, fresh water is the lifeblood out here in the desert for the ecosystem, for the farmers, for the animals that live around here. And of course for the crocodiles. I'm keeping a bit of an eye on the uh, oil temperatures and pressures here, of course today. Just after we lost a little bit of oil from the last leg and then topped up some oil when we were back in Kununurra. Everything's looking good though, the temperatures exactly where it should be, the pressure's where it should be as well at this stage of the flight. So yeah, I'm happy with where everything is, but I'm keeping the engine page up there as I do normally during the longer flights, but I'm keeping the engine page up here uh, more often than not, just to keep an eye on the oil temperatures and pressures, just to make sure everything's doing what it should be doing. Cool. Lake Argyle. I knew it was big. I never realized it was that big. That's what she said. 
It was good being down on ground level actually yesterday because it gives you more of an appreciation of the terrain. It always looks very flat and soft and you can plop down quite easily on it from above but when you're actually on the ground it reminds you how rocky and uneven the terrain actually is. So flying over today I'm a little bit more conscious actually about where I would put it. So we've got nine knots of tailwind so it's kind of pushing us that way so if we did have to pull the chute we're going to float down under the chute but the wind's obviously going to carry us forward as well so we're going to hit in that direction. Over to my right there's a little bit more terrain, over to my left it's a little bit flatter so I'd probably angle us left and then pull the chute. It's always trying to think ahead of what might happen and uh, what we might have to do in the event of an emergency. I think that's why I'm also tied on two spots. Just get the CTAF for the Bungle Bungles. That's the CTAF is common traffic advisory frequency. Uh, quite often around some airports, a lot of uncontrolled airports actually, and uh, areas where there's a little bit more traffic, lots of scenic flights. In this example, they have these areas where everyone speaks on the same frequency, just so you know what other people are up to. So I've got two, what they call comm units, communication units here in Kilo Juliet, November. So I've got Melbourne, no, I've got Brisbane Centre on one of my comm units and I've got the CTAP for the Bungle Bungles on the other. And I'm just listening out to both. What traffic in the Bungle Bungles area? Cirrus Kilo, Juliet, November, approximately 10 miles to the north, 3,500 down to 2,500. We'll be tracking clockwise round the Bungle Bungles, then departing via Melbourne to Halls Creek. Traffic in the Bungle Bungles area. So the bungle bungles are these little kind of dome, almost like beehive shaped structures uh, made of sandstone which have been deposited here over millions of years and they've got these distinct sort of strafings, these different colours in them and that's caused, I believe that's caused by some layers, they've been deposited over different years so they've got different compositions but some layers have got moisture in, some layers don't have moisture in and so the darker ones are the ones that have got a bit more moisture content in them and those layers have just been formed over a variety of years and it gives it that unique formation, look at that, that's so cool Absolute privilege to do that. That was excellent. Bungle bungles. I still love saying bungle bungles on the radio. I get to say it one more time. You ready? Melbourne traffic and traffic in the bungle bungles area. Kilo Juliet November is overhead. Melbourne 2500 tracking to Halls Creek. Got the departing traffic just out to my left at the moment. We're just coming across you right to left if you've got us. Melbourne traffic. Probably, yeah, we got you this much. Good idea, Mabel. Thanks, mate. Climb us back up. Trucking along now to Halls Creek. We've got a great tailwind. Don't really need it today, but it's nice to have it anyway. 26 knots, almost exactly behind us. Ground speed today of 186 knots. I think that's the fastest we've been across the ground since this trip started. We need this tomorrow when we're actually going to Uluru tomorrow. But anyway, I'm not going to be ungrateful. We have a great tailwind which is going to get us to Halls Creek 
I've just prepped myself on the approach. Um, I'm assuming based on the winds that it's going to be runway 04, which means it's, we're going to join downwind on a left circuit to then turn base and final for runway 04. Brief myself on the circuit height 2400, that's a thousand feet below. And using that rule that I talked about in a few videos ago, that's two minutes plus two minutes, so four minutes out, and we're ten minutes out. So I've still got about six minutes before I need to descend. I don't know about you, but it's always at this point that I start thinking, hmm, have I got something completely wrong and did I go the wrong like reciprocal out of the last airport? Did I go south when I should have gone north? Fun questions like that pop into my head around about this point when I feel like I should be able to see the airport and I can't. But we're due there in six minutes. Trust your watch. Airport inside. It's an exciting moment when you're in the middle of the desert. Fourth Street traffic, Kilo Judy and Burma turning final, runway 04, full stop, Fourth Street. And now we're in Horse Creek for the night. Just need to remember where to stay. Why is it every time I land somewhere, I always forget where I'm staying? I think there are only two hotels in town anyway, so let's just try them both. Yeah. 